Israel and Palestine are both really important to us, especially as Christians living inside of the church, um, mainly because um, there is a, uh, a remarkable social justice issue at work here in this part of the world. Um, and as a Christian, I'm concerned uh, anywhere in the world where I see injustice happening, where people are suffering. And in particular, uh, this particular place, uh, Israel, Palestine, there is a great deal of this. So my compassion for these people is aroused because of what I have seen here on personally. Um, but there's another aspect to this that's important to me. Um, I am concerned about life here in Israel, Palestine, because the body of Christ is here. Um, and many of us in the Western Church has, have not met the body of Christ in this place. Um, and so therefore, when I'm in the occupied West Bank, or even when I'm in Israel itself, um, I can meet the church. And the church is suffering under uh, the present conditions that we have inside of this country. Um, so there are a lot of reasons uh, why we as Christians in the West certainly need to care about what's happening here. In terms of how Western Christians have a harmful or helpful impact on the situation on the ground, um, I think the hurtful and harmful impact gets more publicity with regards to the Christians who offer unconditional support for whatever the Israeli government is doing, a phenomenon you particularly see in the US. But over the last few years, there's also been increasing signs that Western Christians are also having a positive impact on the ground. Uh, and examples of that include responsible and ethical tours that go out there from church groups, for example, uh, tours that meet with Christian Palestinian believers who are living under Israeli occupation. I think that relates to a more general positive development, which is Western Christians hearing and giving an opportunity for Palestinians to speak directly themselves. I think there are a lot of uh, misconceptions about this conflict uh, in Israel-Palestine. And when I'm in conversations, uh, particularly with uh, people living in the West, these misconceptions always come out. Um, for instance, there is the misconception that this is a religious conflict. It is a conflict between Israeli Jews, for instance, or and Muslims. And in fact, I don't believe that at all. It is a political conflict of two people who are struggling over how to divide, how to share uh, this land, uh, how they might live charitably uh, together. Um, another um, misunderstanding about this conflict, I think, is that there's only one victim in this conflict. But I really believe that both Israelis and Palestinians are suffering in this conflict. Um, this uh, conflict, this occupation is really destroying the Israeli soul because deep down in Israeli thinking, Israeli Jewish consciousness really, there is a profound commitment for justice. And the very same thing could be said on the Palestinian side. This occupation, this conflict is, is, is really damaging this community. There is another dimension. How we as a church are responding and addressing the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is not only the issue of the church, it is our testimony to the Jewish people and to the Muslim people. How are we going to address the issue of justice? How are we going to address the issue of Jewish historical religious attachment to the land? How are we going to address uh, the all the uh, or the majority of the issues that we have here in the land will speak loud about our kingdom of God. When we talk about Patan, we don't talk about one nation against others, a message for a nation, not for the others. When we talk about Bethlehem, we talk about the globality. We talk about the humanity. That is why when Bethlehem is oppressed, when Bethlehem is discriminated, I believe its message is oppressed. Its message is discriminated. Living in the Bethlehem area all my life, uh, you know, I met many, many uh, Christians who come to visit here, to live here for a short while, to serve here. And they often ask me about, what do you think will happen in the Holy Land? Uh, how do you think peace will be achieved? Uh, and after, you know, minutes, even hours of discussion, Usually, uh, the conversation will end with something like, uh, they would say, you know, there will never be peace uh, in Palestine and Israel until Jesus returns. And I remember that uh, as a child, I used to like this answer because it made Jesus look like a superhero. Well, Jesus is going to come and put an end to all this war. But then as I grew up and began studying the Bible more and began considering the teachings of Jesus more, uh, to be honest, I'm no longer satisfied with this answer. And now that I have a one-year-old son, uh, there's a sense of urgency. 
and I must think about the future of my son. And so uh, I no longer wait for divine intervention. I rather, uh, I, I believe in God's call to action. And I believe if peace is going to happen here, the church must be involved. We must take seriously uh, the commandments of Jesus to be peacemakers, to be uh, uh, agents of peace and reconciliation uh, in this land.